Hello, good morning to everyone. Um, I'm Rui Florentino from Portugal, and I'm very pleased to be at the Symposium of Formal Methods in Architecture, the first one that I participate. Uh, I was more or less uh, motivated by David, who is one of the organizers. And David, he's here in the <clears throat> with our students in the new department of architecture at the new school um, of architecture in Porto, a private school called Universidade Portugalense. Just to make a small context, we are we were already teaching architecture in urbanism since 25 years. Well, I started in Galicia School 2014, so more or less eight years. And then we are now in the University Portugalense with our Spanish and Portuguese uh, students. What I'm going to talk about, it's not um, a, a, an ended project. It's a <clears throat> work in progress. So I... Uh, fortunately, I will not complete the paper yet, although <clears throat> uh, we are trying to make efforts to do so uh, briefly. And uh, the agenda of this presentation <clears throat> focuses on these eight things, the urban framework for teaching and for teaching urbanism to to, to architects in the School of Architecture, a tool of design thinking, applying games, games in cities, a particular focus on the game of Sudoku, who is the name of the presentation, the title of the presentation, some activities in class, and maybe a new game, maybe, a digital methods that can be applied further, not not for the moment, but further, and more, more, more applications of this um, teaching, met teaching methodology, more um, ludic one. But to starting with the first point of uh, urban framework, as you know, in, as planners, we try to organize the cities, the territories. This is an image of Paris, is the schema directeur, carte de synthèse. Uh, one of the images is, for me, the, the interpretation of this image, it's <clears throat> trying to make it easier for, for developing, for, for the quartiers, for the neighborhoods. And we see maybe um, two, two main patterns, two main blue patterns, one more focus on services, one more focus on housing and the different ones. So the the, the way archi the, the way we're in planners do maps and trying to communicate their ideas to the developing to the, the to the city and the transformation, um, it depends very much of, of how we show our our ideas. I think this map is very interesting because it's it's a synthesis and is very <coughs> is more more or less easy to interpret. Um, what we do also with um, with um, with uh, the research that was commented before, we we do often um, analysis of of uses, land uses. In this case, a small part of Lisbon, um, and we try to make this analysis, trying to focus on the land use in on the on the ground floor, for in this example the ground floor of uh, commerce, the ground floor of housing, the ground floor of uh, equipments. You see there a church in blue. You see there housing on the ground floor is red. You see commerce in ground floor, usually ground floor in yellow. <coughs> and we do so trying to uh, establish uh, patterns for the city and for the continuity for the continue con for maybe the continuity of the of the morphotypologies of the cities. I think this is more con 
is, is a con is a controversial uh, team. It's not very easy to 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 prescribe what is good to continue with the city, because in very moments of history we see different things mixed, different morphotypologies mixed, and these kind of things that when they are mixed, they are more often interesting. So the continuity of morphotypology, it's not always um, a solution, or not always the, the, the unique solution for, for planity, uh, for, for planning and urban this, this, this design. Of course, when we teach urbanism, we go into the classics. Uh, this is an image uh, very interesting to, sit, to, to make a synthesis of a Kevin Lynch approach with the image of the city and, the, and, the, and the, some uh, legibility of the city with the district, the landmarks, the nodes, the path. And I try to communicate with all the schools, I think we do so in all this architectural teaching. We try to communicate our students that <laughs> when they trying to make urban design, when they're trying to analyze the cities, they maybe uh, catch these, these ideas, uh, these classical ideas. And when we go to the, a, larger, a larger approach, of course, we do, all, um, we do the same thing, more or less the same thing, because we're trying to focus on the identities. This is a, a drawing, this is a regional transect of Andres Duani and the guys of UNU Urbanism in, in North America. But I think it's very useful also as an operation to teach and try to, 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 comp to make the students comprehend the identities of the different sections of the landscape um, because they have to um, be focused on what is the main characteristic of each part of the, that regional or urban landscape. So, um, trying to make uh, these things of um, urban planning in the classes of architectures, or of, of future architects, it's not so easy because the teaching of architecture is based more in buildings, in objects, in design spaces um, of architecture, and um, to make that approach at a larger scale, it's not so, many times, very, very easy. So uh, in, in, uh, with, with a couple of colleagues, of teachers in the Universidade Portugalense, we try to uh, stimulate them with more pedagogical uh, tools and ludic tools as games. So we use more or less the design thinking method that focus on these on this parts, the teamwork, definition of the problems, the customers, the students, the needs, the goals, the, the brainstorming, the experience, the feedback, a prototype, and of course, the next one, develop and evolution. When we look at uh, games in uh, pedagogical approach for teaching urbanism, we see clearly that, for example, a theory of uh, Pedro Ortiz. Pedro Ortiz is a very um, well. Is it, it? It was the um, the director of the last trying to make a, um, a regional plan for Madrid in the last uh, years of the twenty the, the past century, and now he's um, consulting of World Bank. Um, and he explains very much of these ideas of metropolis. The, the metropolis, it's not now the, the, the image of a city as a, as a classical way of one center and a radial orbital development. A metropolis nowadays it more look like a matrix and looks more like a pattern of chairs, of checkers. So it's a it's a different way to look of, of, the, of, of, of these larger cities, complex cities. And in the first book of, uh, in the, the first um, lesson of urbanism 
the known book of Bernardo Secchi, uh, in the last chapter, I, I, I understood there uh, his approach of games, of teaching, and the, the analogy between games and urbanism. And he, he explains, of course, the city is not a puzzle. Because a puzzle, you buy the game, and you have an image. And you try to, with your children and your students, maybe, you try to compose that puzzle because it's a fixed image that was given uh, a priori. And of course, the city is not like that. And even, even the city is not, as I mentioned before, it's not like the, um, well, this is not the checkers, this is the domino, sorry. The domino, <coughs> the domino is to put the same number um, the same number uh, on the left, on the right, up and down, and the six with the six, the four with the four. And we as urban planners, we think more or less like this, because, but it's not, so, um, it's not so simple of that, of course. Um, and as you, as you already know, of course, these, uh, these urban architects Brazilian Jaime Lerner. Jaime Lerner gave us a, a great lesson about uh, urban acupuncture. He's trying to move one piece or two pieces, and then all the, all the surrounding will improve with, do, with doing something better, and the organization of the city could improve with some, um, some movements in, in some specific points. And, uh, also, um, well, the monopoly, I, I'm now reaching my 50 years, and monopoly, uh, I don't remember how it, how it, the, how it, the rules of the monopoly, but uh, monopoly, of course, is very, or, or the economic or financial dimension of the city is also very important, but the goal to teach our students is not to achieve more rent or not to achieve the real estate uh, improvement. But uh, I think the architects and urban planners, of course, have to um, understand this economic dimension also of the cities. And then we reached this game that I play in the, in the beaches in the summer. Uh, we all, maybe we all see in the newspapers, the Sudoku game is a, very popular, no? And I understood that uh, Sudoku <coughs> more or less was invented by American, and the game was, um, the game crossed the Pacific and went to Japan, and then they gave this number, this, um, this name of Sudoku. But Sudoku is about the number of plays, the, the, the place of the number. And the place of the number should not repeat, and the place of the number should not repeat in the same, uh, uh, quadrado, and or on the line or on the column, of course. And there are other ways of uh, doing with six, with nine, with. So I think it's a, a good um, aspect to teach the organization of the city, and it could be reflected on how um, how a young student of architecture could understand the city and could understand the, 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 the patterns of the exercise of the studio that he's doing in, this, in that uh, year. Well, we do some experience this year in class. We invited a young colleague, Miguel Souza, who is do, doing very much these games with students, not only focused on, on urbanism, but is, um, is very interesting to approach and to give teamwork in the classes, to give participation also in professions, etc. And we apply this on an event called Urban Design in Healthy Cities. And we do some exercises, of course, <clears throat> around, um, around our, our, our university. We apply the director plan of Porto, their strategies, their land use, and to understand the regulations. And we apply also about the, the, the urban justice of giving some more uh, um, readjustment of, um, of um, real estate developments, about the balance between the different uses. 
So this is, can be more or less applied in this kind of exercises. Well, the Sudoku is a game of an individual. Uh, you, as an individual, you do the game, and your colleague maybe do his own game. But it's better a game with with a team. It's not uh, it's to stimulate the communication, of course. And we, we're trying to make a, a new game um, with with two with two with two steps. Uh, we have, uh, of course, the lines with um, on the left, the lines with A, B, C, D, E, etc., and the columns of one, two, three, four, five. Well, a, uh, the first step, for example, of, of a simple game of that, that we give you 18 cards, 18 cards, nine cards of the of the of the lines and nine cards of the columns. And you have to put with, with the cards that is given to you, you have to put the card, <coughs> you have to choose the line or the column. And you have to put the, the, the card uh, with, for, for, example, for example, with four main land uses. The four main land uses well, these are also um, not qu not quite um, accepted for all, but there are two more uh, profitable uses of the private developers that are maybe housing and services, employment, and there are other two that are more public and non-profitable land uses, and it's the green areas and the equipments cultural, social, sport, etc. Um, teaching, health, etc. So if you if you give this to these four main uses a color, well um, you can put um, you can put the the profitable and non-profitable uses side by side, not repeating each other. If you do this exercise with the students, maybe in the, in the line or in the column, they don't repeat um, this pattern as it is. For example, they can, in, the, in the column, they cannot use, for example, the yellow, or use more often the, green, the, the blue or the green, etc. So you give this example and, and, you, and you show, well, this is a balance of four colors and four uh, places for each color, ex except the center one that is have five, five, five spaces. And with, this, uh, with the second step, more of, 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 of four players, for example, you can use the cards of the number and the, of the number and the letter, and you can, in these four four uh, different areas, you can ask them to also give that input of choosing not um, side by side the same, the same color. Well, this is, maybe you think this is a very simple way, but I think the discussion that can, that can occur in, in, in classes can be, can be useful because an architect uh, uh, student is mainly focused on forms, on drawing, etc. And urban planning and urbanism, it's not only of that. It's about the quantification of the things. It's about the, the um, organization of different land uses and the mixed use, as you, as you, as you know, as um, an opportunity for um, more walkable cities, more healthy cities. And I think this kind of uh, game can be useful to teach uh, this kind of um, ideas. Well, uh, of course, this game can be, uh, can be focused on more different approaches about the value of the things, about the heritage, about the composition, about 3D. And these, my, these are lines of my other colleagues uh, in the university. 
And there are uh, all, uh, also architects who do uh, approaches, formal approaches, and give these ideas more ludic. As for example, uh, Eduardo Arroyo, who is an is an Spanish architect. And with this kind of uh, table, it's very interesting also to communicate the things about the mobility, about the distances. It's more obvious to, 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 to try to reach that attention on this kind of, of things. And this, has, this uh, has also, I think, an interesting, um, an interesting approach for the professionals who are working in the city councils, who are working in the management, in the assessment of urban developments. Because one of the things I, tr I always try to reinforce is the quantification of the things. And this has uh, also a link with this kind of uh, workshop, this kind of symposium. And these are things that we can measure and we can see about the, what's going on with the city in this kind of indicators, this data. And the, the collaborative planning, that the participation processes, etc., they can be also stimulated with this kind of, of games and this kind of uh, processes. So just to finish with that idea, can be uh, can result in a digital approach also. And nothing more, just to make an end with the Leon Korea drawing, the plurality, the freedom of choice, and we have to always to open the minds of the students to this kind of uh, approaches and scales. Uh, thank you very much.